Yo guys, I've got a spark which I'm going to use to ignite the fire for another video here on the channel. Now with over 167 unique skanders, that's an awful lot of abilities. The minimum number of abilities a skander can have is free, meaning that in the process of creating every skander from the ground up, the developers at Toys for Bob and Vicarious Visions had to create at least 501 unique attacks since that's 167 multiplied by 3 and in some cases Skarders have more than 3 attacks so even that final number is not accurate. Yes there are Skarders with similar movesets, Flight being the finest example as many characters with wings or jetpacks in particular especially within the first two games tended to always have this as a tertiary ability given that Flight very usually doesn't deal any damage and does nothing other than increase your Skander's movement speed and armor. I typically find it to be a waste of an ability as it would be far better to have a tertiary attack that dealt damage to enemies in battle. But there are also a lot of primary moves which are basic and quite swimmable. These can include things like scratches, projectiles, sword swings or punches which multiple Skanders also possess. But that still leaves a lot of room for creative freedom, we're still talking hundreds upon hundreds of unique abilities and it's truly admirable all the amazing movesets that these developers managed to come up with to make each Skander feel and play differently. You combine that with all of their unique personalities and it's like playing a whole new game each time you switch between your Skanders. But the greatest way to guarantee you'll enjoy a Skarner's moveset is to throw in some sort of healing ability. Now you can't do this too often as this would make the game too easy when playing the characters. Not that they cared about how easy certain characters made the game to play, that's the only reason why Drobot exists in the first place. But still, if every Skarner could suddenly heal themselves up with ease, there is no punishment to your mistakes, since you can just quite easily heal yourself back up afterward. Plus, the ability itself would no longer feel all that special, given that every single Skarner's gameplay would now possess it, so healing for 10 minutes straight after each combat scenario would just become the norm. Naturally, that brings us back to today's topic, where I'm going to be looking at every single healing ability of those few Skarners lucky enough to have been chosen to possess such an awesome skill. So now, let's hurry up and roll the intro without further ado. Naturally, we're going to start with Spyro's Adventure, where there are 8 characters with healing abilities. The simplest and most notorious of which is Stealth Wolf, as she can heal up naturally over time. No matter where you are or what your health is currently at, Stealth Wolf will naturally heal up by the same increment of 5 at the exact same pace all the time. You can even just stand still and wait for Stealth Wolf to fully heal back up between combat scenarios. It truly is quite broken. Next up is another life scan of that being Camo. Once again this ability can only be used once you find his soul gem and after holding the primary attack button three times you'll create a circle of sun blasts around you which can heal you at a constant pace for a few seconds before you need to repeat the entire cycle all over again. Because it's a limited time in which you heal and that it's a longer process to begin, it makes Camo's healing ability more balanced as it's not just simply broken and it needs to require good spacing. This is because your Sunblast shield will break if you run into anything and you'll stop healing up, so it rewards players for good timing and maintaining distance from enemies mind you. All his other attacks function whilst in the shield and it has very little cooldown, so of course it's an OP move all the same. I mean, any healing ability is OP for that matter. Unfortunately, Zook, despite being a life scanner, is the only life character of Spyro's Venture with no healing ability. Even Stump Smash when in water can heal up. 
This means in dry and barren levels like the Cadaverous Crypt or Lava Lakes Railway, you can conduct no healing whatsoever. Once you find a body of water, Stump Smash will form a raft-like thing, and you can even have him squirt water using your primary attack button when in the water, mind you. And this makes him the only lifeguarder capable of swimming, but his healing ability in the water happens at a constant pace. The exact same as what can be said for Zap. Thanks to his love for the sea soldier ability, he also can heal up in equal increments at a constant pace whenever he is swimming. So it's effectively the exact same thing as Stealth Elf, but exclusive to when Zap is in the water. Soldier abilities like these unfortunately become useless in Swap Force onwards, where if there is no longer any swimming mechanics. It's also what makes Double Trouble's Soul Gem literally useless after Giants. Being able to float over water doesn't help you when there is no water to float over. Coincidentally enough, however, past Giants, these three characters, whose Soul Gems revolved around swimming or floating over water, were never brought back in any form for future Skarnik games anyway. So far, we've looked at four different healing abilities. That leaves us with four more to go. And next up is Chop Chop, whose healing ability is easily the most rewarding. For defeating an enemy with your blade attacks, you receive an orb that heals you for seven health afterwards. You get one per enemy and only if you defeat said enemy with your sword. Shield bashing or using your bone bramble projectile don't count. This really rewards your risks in getting close and personal with your enemies and ultimately adds more fast satisfaction even when you come out on top. But next up is going to be Ghost Roaster. By defeating enemies with your chain attack, you leave behind ghosts. You can either leave those ghosts be and allow them to attack enemies for you, or you can travel through them in your skull dash and eat the ghosts along the way so then you can heal yourself up. Ghost Roaster's entire level even revolves around pies that heal you up and give you additional health bonuses throughout all the other levels in the game once you've beat the level at hand, so it's funny how an undead warrior is themed so heavily around health and healing up. But next up is Wrecking Ball, who can heal himself up whenever he eats a smaller enemy whole. Normally these are the enemies which are only defeated in a single attack, so being able to gobble them up quickly gives you no benefit besides the small amount of health you heal up afterwards. His tongue can also grab food and bring it back to you, just like Dinorang's Sticky Boomerang ability, which he acquires as part of his Soul Gem. Food can be grabbed in unique ways by other characters as well, the best example being Terrafin, who can even grab food whilst underground thanks once again to his Soul Gem ability. Finally, there is Whirlwind, whose healing ability can't heal herself. Instead, it heals any Skarner hit by her rainbow attack. Any Skander that's hit by the rainbow itself is healed for 10, so spamming this can allow your partner to remain at full health with ease. If you have a second whirlwind, then in co-op you can constantly heal up each other and create a cycle of healing that no enemy can hope to stop. Luckily though, that is turned back into an attack for PvP. Imagine fighting another player and doing nothing but healing them up the entire time. Regardless, Whirlwind is easily the most unique thus far, given that she heals others rather than herself and truly rewards cooperation and teamwork. Next up we move on to Giants. Given that there are only 16 new characters introduced into this game, it's pretty obvious that fewer characters were given healing abilities this time around. In fact, the only character introduced into this game to have a healing ability even is none other than Flashwing, which is exclusive to her top path. You see, whenever she shoots a wall of her crystal shard, it creates a little crystal on that wall. These crystals launch out their own crystal shards whenever you press the primary attack button. This means things like shielded enemies can follow you, and then whilst they're following you, you can use your primary attack button to fire off crystal shards from these crystals left remaining on the wall so any enemies that are facing you and then have their exposed back to these crystal shards can be dealed damage to with ease using this strategy so all of a sudden enemies are being attacked at all angles by up to three crystal shards at once and those are just for shards from the walls mind you there are also crystal shards being initiated from the primary attack in and of itself so taking that into account there are four shards being fired off at just about every angle enemies struggle to cope with it 
and you can see now what makes this character as OP as she is. And for the cherry on top of the cake, she can also walk up to these wall crystals and heal herself up at a constant rate as long as she's next to them. Creating three wall crystals at the same time heals you up three times as fast as you have three times for crystals healing you up at any given moment. And yet still each individual crystal will heal you up for the same amount, that being 11 health each um, increment, you could go as far to say. Next up, we move on to Swap Force, where if there are several more characters with healing abilities this time around. Night Shift even gives you a double whammy as you heal up by biting enemies, so their health is drained while yours is recovered. It's ultimate salt to the wound. Then there's Slobbertooth's healing ability, which is probably the most problematic thus far. He also swallows an enemy after they're being chomped down, so you can do this for things like chompies, but unlike with Wrecking Ball, it takes so long to do so, and you can't use your secondary attack whilst you wait. So in the end, the time it takes for you to swallow an enemy and heal up just isn't all that worth it. Now, Scratch on the other hand has another notorious healing ability, which is incredibly broken since she can heal up with every piece of treasure you pick up. Given that you collect treasure in abundance in Swap Force, it's hard to not heal up incredibly quickly. You actually have to avoid the treasure in order to not heal up at such an immense pace, mind you. No matter the treasure value, however, you still heal up for the same amount, which I find to be a huge missed opportunity, as they could have made it to where, in harder difficulties, you gain a higher treasure count for each piece of treasure you gather. Whilst doing this, you could have healed more, rewarding players more for choosing for high, harder difficulties in the game even. I was about to say higher difficulties, which also works just as well, I suppose. But with that being said, we will move on to Spy Rise next. And just as you thought Spy Rise couldn't get any better, here he is with a finishing attack that heals him. So he's defeating enemies very quickly and on the rare chance they manage to strike an attack before he absolutely annihilates them, he can just heal himself afterwards for finishing them off anyways. Yep, Spy Rise is officially dumb stupid broken. Now food classifies itself as healing, but what happens when there isn't any food around for you to heal yourself up with? Fear not, because two characters in Swap Force have the means of acquiring food when there isn't any around. Boomjet has a chance for a special delivery from his airstrike whenever he's low on health, and you know, of course, this special delivery, quote unquote, is food. Meanwhile, Zulu's wolf can dig up food when on low health, but only down his wolf path, which is definitely the better one. In fact, whenever a Skarna has a healing ability down a certain pathway, it automatically makes that pathway better by default, which leads us quite smoothly onto Bushwhack. Down his bottom path, Bushwhack can hold the primary attack button to create an aura of healing. Reminds me of the massive bush Groot created to sacrifice himself for the Guardians at the end of the movie. But let's move on before I start tearing up. We are Groot. You simply hold the primary attack button and you heal for as long as it's held at a constant rate. It's basically Camo's ability, but quicker to set up, and it never stops until you let go of a button. It can be risky to use in the midst of combat as it leaves you quite vulnerable, which is why you've got to wait for the perfect opportunity to use it, or just wait between battles and use that to fully heal up uh, during your downtime, mind you. So yes, Bushwhack is like Camo, but better. But nextly, there is Tough Look whom can heal herself when hiding in her clovers. This increases user's motivation to be stealthier and ultimately rewards more strategic approaches to combat. However, your clover bushes do disappear after a while and it's quite the process to start healing up again given its similar strengths and downsides, again, like that of Camo. Ironically, it's the Undead Cast and Trap team that have all four characters in which are able to heal themselves in some manner or another. Funnybone can heal himself whenever he gets next to a paw and it strokes along his back. 
I believe this was created to add to the cuteness factor of the character and make it more appealing to children so they'll beg their parents to buy the character for them. And then there's also Crypt King's Swarm Path, which is as good as it is, simply because whenever one of your swarms expire, it heals you for 25 health. Since you spam the secondary attack and have four swarms at once, with them constantly expiring, you're guaranteed to heal a lot, even in the middle of combat, which can save your skin from an ultimate defeat. Plus, swarms also deal dumb stupid damage and stun enemies, making it easier for you to outmaneuver them and avoid taking further damage by defeating them from afar. Now, Shortcut's healing ability is pretty random, as phantom puppets, whenever they attack an enemy, have the chance to heal you up when they expire. It's not a guarantee, unlike Crypt Kings. Undead seems to have a theme with all their healing abilities, they reward you for sending enemies to the undead I suppose, as Batspin can heal by collecting any pet bats that have bitten an enemy. It's like Chop Chop, uh, how he heals up for defeating enemies, but instead it's a pet bat making a bite which heals you up. Although, because you're collecting a pet bat, I suppose it's more similar to Ghost Roasters, where he of course heals up from any ghosts he eats whilst in his Skull Dash form. Anyway, speaking of Ghost Roaster, his third ability might make him invincible, but that's at the expense of losing your own health. He's one of the only two characters who can inflict self-damage, enough to where they can kill themselves even in the hub worlds of Skarners. Of course, he shares this same flaw with High Five, but even funnier yet, High Five can heal just like Ghost Roaster, but with apples created by the very same slamming attack that deals damage to him in the first place. High Five and Ghost Roaster are the only ones capable of killing themselves in the academy, yet they're still binded together by one thing they have in common, that being their ability to both deal damage to themselves as well as heal themselves back up afterward. Okay so whilst in post I realised a few things about High Five and Ghost Roaster specifically to add into the edit. So naturally High Five it would turn out that he heals himself for the exact same amount that he damaged himself with in the first place if you just stand still and absorb all the apples launched out from a spinning attack afterwards so there's nothing really beneficial to it besides of course the damage you'll deal to enemies. But outside of that, it would turn out that you can't actually kill yourself with this ability. Once High Five reaches 10 health, he no longer performs a spinning attack that damages himself. He can only perform a small pounce. So naturally, the game prohibits you from killing yourself with this attack, which is very clever programming. What isn't so clever programming, however, is if you're in a flying motion and then initiate the spinning attack, then it creates an awful animation as a part of trap team's usual glitchiness but anyway whilst high five can't really kill himself with his own attacks ghost roast on the other hand doesn't struggle in that category next up is gusto just like his fellow eaton scanners he has quite the appetite he can suck in an enemy and heal up by swallowing them but this is much faster than Slobbertooth and can be done with bigger enemies and at greater speed than with Wrecking Ball, making Gusto for true big eater of Skylands, I suppose. Finally, from Trap Team, there is Fist Bump. He can create tread lines using either his second or third abilities, as well as just by walking. Creating these tread lines don't only give you the ability to spike enemies that walk into them whenever you pound for ground, but they also sprout bamboo which heals you, meaning that just by walking in circles you can grow enough bamboo along these tread lines to fully heal yourself up. The bamboo even makes sense given Fist Bump's panda-like appearance, and we all know how much pandas love to eat bamboo. Man, now for footage I have in front of you is rather cute, so let's move on before we lose track of the video here and instead remain too heavily invested in these pandas. So, let's move on to superchargers without further ado. All three of the live superchargers in the game can actually heal. Turbocharged Donkey Kong does it at a constant rate whenever he's in his hyper form, rewarding players who constantly change up his gameplay and risk the vulnerability for initiating this form. 
Frillipede creates butterflies from the bug bomb explosions left behind by his sticky grenades. Catching these butterflies heals him up, rewarding quick reactions and fast paced gameplay. It also allows his grenades to flow easily into the rest of his moveset, making everything feel connected and well thought through. The healing is of course a welcome addition as cherry on top of the cake and all of that. But finally we have super shit stealth off. Oh, sorry, super shot stealth off. And in typical stealth off fashion, she can heal, but not automatically at a constant pace and value. If that broken ship has sailed, Instead, Whisper Elf can now summon herself in and heal you after injury and after defeating an enemy. So only when you've been hit and defeated an enemy can you be rewarded. A much better way of doing things um, this time round for sure. Finally from Superchargers there is Bone Bash Roller Brawl. Once your blades have been launched out like boomerangs, you can press the secondary attack buttons and rather than use those blades as boomerangs, instead you send kisses out to enemies at a fast rate of fire to both deal damage to those enemies as well as heal you up at the same time. It's the same great deal as with Night Shift and it ensures you're constantly keeping your concentration with Bone Bash Roller Brawl as you're invested in her gameplay and want to be successful with all her combos as they truly flow into one another and that's what truly makes this character very fast paced and incredibly fun to use. Plus, it takes away the downside of Night Shift's really long cooldown with his bite because you do his bite and it feels like 20 years before you can do another one due to said cooldown I was alluding to earlier. Finally, for Imaginators, we don't really have any healers. Ember, when she gets low on health, initiates rage mode and creates a damage and fire orb for a desperate plea to survive. Tidepool also survives a final blow by decreasing to one health and using her armor to take the hit like a champ. Neither of these abilities heal you though, making healing only really possible in the game through food, leveling up or of course whirlwind in co-op. I suppose with Crash Bandicoot though, additional lives is the equivalent of additional health you can lose because when you gain additional lives via crates with that character, what happens is that of course you're healed at zero health. So being able to get an entire life means that you have the opportunity to survive this zero damage again. So whilst not physically healing, you do have more health to go around should you get hit. So it's healing, just in a different manner for a lack of a better way of putting it. Night Shift, on the other hand, with his additional lives, never gives you a way to earn back those lives once they're lost. But for Bite, was healing enough as is for him. So when you include Crash Bandicoot, that makes 29 of our 167 unique Skarners capable of healing within this cast. So long as I haven't missed any, this means that 17% of all Skarners can heal and you can see the entirety of that cast before you. Boy, don't they all look glorious together. Of course, besides food, there are other ways to heal Skarners. Your elemental gates and giants, whenever your element matches the element of the gate, you can be healed for 5 at a constant rate or for 20 with the charm you buy from Auric in Rumble Town. Or you can take advantage of a magic item, either the healing elixir or platinum sheep can heal you up from trap team backwards because of course in superchargers and imaginators those um, magic items don't have the same functionality to them. Now the main strength being that this can be done for anyone and the main drawback being the restricting time limit and the fact that it can only be taken advantage of once per level. Vehicles even have their own form of healing with wrenches found in the arenas or in for Stealth Stinger's case you can replenish the armor of your vehicle using its secondary attack. And what's cool is that it only ever replenishes the armor of your vehicle, it doesn't conduct healing of the actual physical Skarner itself so I find that a great touch and an excellent attention to detail. But now back to this glorious ensemble shot with all of the Skarners that possess healing moves. Is very much a track team dominated cast, and the main elements of which are even involved in the first place include earth, air, 
life and undead. Now with that all being said and done, this video is coming to an end, but before that happens I first want to thank all my Blazing Knights and Scorpion Dragons whose support allow me to continue pumping out quality videos like this one. Without them, this all wouldn't be possible, therefore I genuinely appreciate every last one of you from the bottom of my heart. If you enjoyed this video, I have others you can watch by clicking on screen now, and you can even subscribe by pressing the button on the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you in the next one, but until that moment arises, PEACE!